What's up guys, welcome back to Struggle, back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be working on the E36 some more. We actually got quite a bit of modifications, and uh, in today's video, I kinda just wanna work on the little details. Like I promised you guys with Blake, um, as soon as we actually get a few more parts, and we got like one or two more parts, we're actually doing the full manual swap, plus we got a custom shifter, which is gonna look absolutely insane. But until then, we do wanna try to get this thing to pass smog first. So if I go ahead and turn on the car, you guys hear how loud that is? There's an exhaust leak that I'm pretty sure I have the new gaskets for and hopefully that should fix the check engine light. We need the check engine light to go away naturally because once that check engine light goes away, we'll be able to actually get this thing smogged because once we actually get the manual swap through, it won't pass smog anywhere, at least not legally. So uh, at least in California, it's kind of super strict. So long story short, we need to get this dialed in and smogged before we actually do the manual swap. Also, another thing is with this cluster, guys, I don't know if you guys can see the mileage, you guys can't really see it. So all this is super dim, the rest of this stuff is dim this airbag light i'm honestly just going to delete it because we're not going to run normal seats anymore we're going to have that airbag light regardless and it just doesn't look good so we're going to go ahead and delete that as well also other things going to be trying to do in this video guys we have a brand new radio that's kind of like a retro theme from uh race germany it looks super 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 sick so we're going to try to use that on this car you guys saw in the last video that we installed these door cards it just looks so good i honestly love them and i think they just came out absolutely great something that uh i, I did notice that honestly getting in, in and outside the car is that i need the the straps asap and i actually Actually, when you order this through them guys again this whole kit's like under three hundred dollars yeah he actually gives you uh the straps to actually open and close the door with i didn't even know that it was in the box i messaged him saying hey, what kind of straps do you guys recommend he's like there's actually straps in the box so luckily i didn't throw you the box we actually have some straps i don't know if i'm going to be installing this in today's video or not or not i don't really know too sure because i don't want to take all this back apart and then uh you know install these guys and then end up and ordering some yellow ones i already reached out to them i want to order some yellow straps because i'm trying to do a like a yellow and black theme throughout this entire car this carpet's gonna go because giant hole in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just pretty ugly if you ask me. I'm gonna try to go with like a yellow and black theme in the interior. I think it's gonna be super sick, like a yellow cage, the rest of the interior, all black seats, black. Uh, obviously the dash and everything, the roofs, everything's gonna be black. But like a yellow cage, maybe yellow seat belts. I'm thinking about like some kind of like yellow theme somewhere on the steering wheel, yellow straps. I think the yellow details and look super sick. Let me know down below what you guys think. But yeah, I was like, I don't wanna install these straps and then have to t like take it apart, install the straps and then reinstall it. And then when the new straps come in, I'm gonna have to do that again. So hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see in today's video if I want to do this or not. I'm gonna watch a video, see if I have to do any custom drilling again. Because if so, I don't want to drill, install this, and then undrill it and install the new ones. If you all know what I mean. Any, anyway, let me just get you guys outside to see what we actually got for this car. So here it is, guys. This is literally everything I ended up picking up in the last week or two, and uh, this is what I've been honestly saving up for. There's so many parts here for the E36 M3, from converting it to a manual to just doing maintenance to modifying it as well. I'm just super, super, super excited to get all this installed into the car. I think this is probably one of the biggest, like in terms of uh, different builds i've ever done like we did the door card deletes i'm gonna be doing a lot of like retrofitting to this car but not only retrofitting we're also gonna be doing a lot of fabrication work like installing this custom kinematic shift like look how sick this is guys this one has the auto centering as well so it's just gonna be so 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 sick and just to prove to you guys that we're actually doing a proper manual swap i got the clutch pedals here we have the transmission and all the other parts at blake's place but we have the new clutch the new flywheel we have all the gaskets and stuff since we're gonna be dropping the subframe and everything these are all little parts that we're gonna end up needing for the manual swap even this bad boy uh, this is an upgraded line that we're going to end up using, upgraded hoses, uh, we're using whatever the heck this guy is, a selector rod, a bunch of things that my boy Blake was like, hey, you're going to need this for the manual swap. I even ended up picking up uh, one of these bad boys. Actually, one of you guys actually recommended this in the comments. So yeah, I actually read the comments and huge shout out to you guys. You guys told me that if I'm going to end up doing coilovers, uh, which I have right there, I'm going to need to support the rear frame. So these guys actually help support and like distribute the charge around the whole hub like equally. Um, so this pretty much allows it to not crack. So Hopefully ours is not cracked. I guess we'll find out when we actually install the coilovers. But yes, we got this thing all because of you guys. So shout out to you guys. So it don't actually damage the E36 M3. And like I said, guys, we pretty much have every single gasket too because maintenance also comes first. And uh, these guys are actually just gonna hopefully fix our problems. So you guys heard when I started up the car, we had a massive exhaust leak and I believe it's this guy right here. So uh, hopefully this is our issue and hopefully when I replace this, we're not gonna have a massive exhaust leak sound and hopefully it's gonna allow us to help pass smog, which is really important. But yes, guys, we have so many things here. Um, I got a bunch of this stuff from FCP Euro. So again, it's like all the maintenance stuff, all this stuff I got it from FCP Euro. So uh, including this gasket guys. So again, make sure to visit FCP Euro if you guys want to get your maintenance because lifetime warranty, you guys just can't beat that. Even all these manual parts end up getting from FCP Euro. This actually clutch assembly, I got it from pick and pull for like 20, 30 bucks. People are selling these for like over $500 on eBay or like $400, which is just something ridiculous. Manual swaps nowadays, guys, are just going for some insane numbers. So um, I mean, I mean, obviously the numbers I just mentioned is like the craziest, but I mean, that's, that's what it's honestly going for, which is crazy. I got this for 30 bucks. I just pulled 
it myself. We got this from Race German. Uh, it's a kinematic shifter. Um, you guys can also get it directly from kinematic, but honestly, I got it from Race German because I got a lot of other things from Race German, and I figured I want to get the whole package together, and that's what you guys should do as well. I got a brand new cluster because we need a bunch of bulbs from this. I got this from Pick and Pull. It has like all the bulbs in the back, so uh, hopefully that should help fix our cluster issue. <laughs> and we got a bunch of retrofitting things, like some rear LEDs. Got a bunch of other LEDs. Um, I remember I got a bunch of other little mis miscellaneous things, even a new boot that I'll be showing you guys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use this boot with that shifter. I guess we'll find out. But we got new fuses. Uh, we got this new Bluetooth radio, which I'm super excited about. That I'm actually gonna probably install in this video because I really need Bluetooth music, and I think it's gonna be super sick. Race German also has their own harness uh, that makes this thing literally super easy to install. You don't have to do any tapping. If you guys know aftermarket radios, you have to do a bunch of tapping and work with their original harness, not with their harness. Their harness is gonna make it super easy, so that's what we're gonna end up using. And we got a bunch of other little modifications like adding USB charging ports to your E36 OE styles. That's gonna be super clean. Our goal is to build an amazing track car, but also a very, very, very clean track car. I'm going with Sparco seats, I'm going with Sparco seat belts. We're gonna be doing this thing very proper, and I'm just super excited. Probably even do a fresh new paint job in the end. Like, honestly, guys, I'm gonna full send on this car, and hopefully, if the shop ends up working out, which you guys know that I'm working on, it's gonna be insane. Without further ado, guys, we are waiting on the exhaust to kind of cool down before doing the exhaust stuff, so I think we should actually jump into the radio stuff because I'm just too excited for that. It is kind of late today, guys. I'm working kind of late, and I cannot wait till I get the shop because then we'll be able to work any time of the day. My dad does have all his cars inside. We have a couple guests over right now. I didn't really want to join the party, so you know, your man's working today. Um, but yeah, any hizzles, I'm super, super, super excited because this radio is an OEM one. I'm hoping there's no weird wiring in the background. Um, this actually radio says code on it. For some reason, it says code, and some of you guys said in the comments that code means that it, the battery died or something and it needs to get recoded. Um, so hopefully, with this new radio, we can completely avoid that. So I haven't even got to hear music in this car. I don't even know if the speakers are blown out. I know nothing about the sound system in this car. So installing a new radio, having Bluetooth capabilities is gonna completely transform the experience when driving this thing. So I'm so excited. It isn't really like a track car thing, but it's definitely gonna bring the retro theme back, but still have, you know, like modern technology like Bluetooth. So I'm super excited for that. So like I said, guys, I actually got this from Race German. And what's super nice about Race German is that uh, they include everything you need to install this guy. And they even held like an external harness that makes this thing plug and play. So typically you have to like splice wires and tap it in. It comes with like all that stuff as well if you still want to do it that way. Uh, but they actually sell a tap-in kit that literally makes this installation like five minutes long. So if you guys want to install an aftermarket radio that takes five minutes that looks super cool, retro theme, you know, this is the best way to go. It even comes with a microphone, but I don't honestly gonna use that to be honest. And just like that, guys, we got the radio out. That was actually kind of a mission. So basically, I don't know if you guys can see these two flaps right here. Uh, I pretty much put a little Allen key in those holes, loosened up both sides, and then this whole thing just kind of slid out. So uh, yeah, this, that's how you remove the original. It's still beeping. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if this thing's gonna blow up on me or something, but anyways, out with the old. Luckily, this thing didn't have any aftermarket system, so the new one should just go directly plug and play, and we're gonna have Bluetooth in no time. And with the new one, guys, the first thing you wanna do is actually just take apart this metal frame and then put that frame in here first. So. Uh, this should, I believe this kind of just reminds me of how I, it was when I tried to do a retrofit in a super old, like I got a Walmart radio a long time ago for my first E36. And uh, this kind of reminds me of the same exact process, but uh, with the race German harness, it's gonna be 10 times easier. This is the plug and play harness guys. It sh literally should be two plugs and we get to go. We got the radio in the car, guys. Check out how good this thing sits. It's not moving anywhere. It's not coming out. Look how good it looks with like all the OEM stuff. It just looks so retro and I absolutely love it. Okay, we do have speakers. They are working. Um, let's go ahead and go on one, two. I don't know how to use a radio, honestly. Is there a Bluetooth? Like, come on. And guys, I think I found it. It is one, two, three, four pair. All right, guys, are we, are we doing this? Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm in love with this thing. <laughs> Oh man, I have a blown out amplifier back there or something. Not amplifier, I mean like speaker or something. Well, 
At least we got music now, I'm not gonna lie, and it's Bluetooth, I'm so hyped. So that is one of many mods, and uh, I am one happy guy. You guys, I really wanted this interior to really come together. We got the door card so far, the radio in here. Oh my God, guys, this thing, I know it's kind of hideous right now, but I swear to God, by the time I'm done with this thing, it's gonna be show car and track car. It looks so good. At this point, I think it's about time to do the exhaust. Hopefully it is cooled down by now. Buddy, let's get it in there. It turns out that the the gasket's not the issue. It turns out where it connects to the intake manifold, I don't know if you can see it, but this is moving while it's connected. It's completely broken. I tried to record it on my phone a little bit. Oh, you guys can see right there? Completely cut in half. Like, it, look at that. Like, it's, I don't even explain it to you guys. You guys can see the hole. Oh my God, that's my exhaust leak. I need new headers. Well. We're gonna have to figure something out here. Good morning, guys. This is the next morning. I am heading down to Monteca, California, about an hour and something away from me. And uh, we are heading out to hopefully get some headers. This one guy has some headers. One of them is in kind of rough shape and will need to be kind of rebuilt, um, like in the sense of the studs. It needs to get like drilled out and put new studs in there. Um, but these headers go for anyone in the ballpark of like, you know, 100. Um, and like the same condition online to like $300 in decent condition. So 40 bucks for two of them hour drive, hour 15 minutes, I think it's worth it. So we are heading down to Monteca. Wish me luck, guys. Package acquired, we are heading back home. Another hour drive. And we are officially back home, guys. We have the two headers. As you guys can see by this one right here, the bolts are pretty much ripped off. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have to try to see if I can press these out or see what I can do uh, to just get these bolts out. Uh, this one right here, which I believe is the one that's actually cracked in half, this one is in perfectly good shape. So yeah, we got this for $40. I think that's an absolutely good deal. So uh, that's definitely a cop. But um, I did go to BMW to see if they have any gaskets. They don't have any gaskets in stock right now, which is a ripperino. Um, I'm gonna actually talk to my boy Erlon, see if they can get me some gaskets or something. Uh, but any heels, yeah, we need some gaskets pronto for this thing. So for the meantime, I can't get these installed until the gaskets come in. But in the meantime, if I can at least get these bolts out, once we get the gaskets, it'd be a super easy install. Well, not super easy. I mean, we still got like all these sensors and stuff. So it'd be a super pain to install. But uh, it should be a lot easier than dealing all one day if you know what I mean at least the, the patience is there that day <laughs> yesterday you guys saw that we installed the radio I've been enjoying this thing so much we definitely do a speaker upgrade in this thing it is a track car but it is also my daily so speaker upgrade on the way something I also want to do in this video guys is to actually get this thing uh, I want to I want to basically delete that airbag light and then I want to get my mileage to be showing properly so I want to get this thing out I think I have to remove the whole airbag and steering wheel and everything I do have another steering wheel coming in the mail a way clean one brand new coming in that's obviously gonna be replacing this ugly one uh, but I can't wait for that honestly to fix this I really want to see this I want to see everything working properly and then also another issue that I'm trying to knock out guys is the fact that I have no OBD port so I don't know what's going on there uh we're gonna have to take this apart and see if it's maybe just pushed back there somewhere but first things first guys I don't know if you guys can see you can't really see that airbag light it's slightly faded I just honestly want to delete it and you can't really see the miles that's like super faded so the goal is is to be able to see that completely and delete that completely uh the check engine light I don't want to delete that I want that to always function properly uh so uh yeah so let's go ahead and get this thing situated first. First step, disconnecting the battery. Now that we got the battery disconnected, let's go ahead and get that airbag out. And now that I pretty much got the steering wheel partially removed, I'm not gonna remove the entire steering wheel because the clock spring is still connected. I'm just gonna leave it on my lap, but uh, I can still access this bad boy right here. Guys, look at these side by side. This is a 328 and this is an M3. Like literally the only difference is that actually says M right there. And it even has the cutout for it, but it looks like, like hey, they manufactured the exact same way. They just throw a little M badge on it and they call it an M speedometer. Any hizzles, um, yeah. Oh, actually I can see these are white and these are red. Okay, I see that also. Um, but any hizzles, we're not actually gonna get into this, thankfully. We're just gonna go flip around to the back. And uh, if you guys see over here, these bulbs should be the bulbs. I think you just put a flathead on it. And you just twist it a little bit. You get these two bulbs out. These are the ones for the, the mileage. And I believe this one is the one for um, our airbag light. Actually, it says airbag right there too. So yeah, that's our airbag one. 
Oh, it actually has it all labeled too. I don't know if you guys can see all that, but it actually has it all labeled. That's kind of crazy, huh? This one looks like it has all the bulbs we'll ever need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the ones that we need and put it onto the M3 one. And now that we got the mileage connected and the airbag removed, this thing should be ready to be put back in. Also, something I realized, guys, um, with this car is that this steering wheel doesn't actually have like an auto like centering point on the steering wheel. So let me know, is there like a specific point I'm supposed to put it at so I know it's centered? Um, I guess I'm just gonna do an alignment and then recenter the wheel or something if I did mess it up or something. But anywho, let's just put on the speedometer and hopefully everything's working the way I want it to work. Now before actually reassembling everything, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the battery and just make sure this thing's working right. Wish me luck. All right guys, I heard the car turn on, yes. <laughs> Look at those miles. I know they're high mileage, but at least you can see the miles. I'm super happy about that. It's 169, 851, which is super nice. The airbag light, you can still kind of see it. Hmm, hmm. I don't know why I even completely deleted that. Like I took out the bowl for that entirely. Maybe I'm gonna put some uh, some tape back there. I should probably do that while it's actually, yes, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But look at the mileage, oh my God, we actually fixed something, that's awesome. Guys, so I was actually taking this apart and I figured you guys are probably gonna wanna know how I actually do this uh, because now that I'm holding it up, you guys can see the airbag is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put tape over that, just completely delete the airbag light because for a track car, uh, you don't need airbags and at the same time, uh, that light is just annoying. <laughs> BMW owners, we don't like any lights on our dash, even though there always are some kind of light. The check engine light, I'm always gonna leave that there because I actually do want it to pop up if you have an issue with the car. But yeah, if you look at this 328 one real quick, it's uh, basically that screw, that screw, all the screws that are like right here, right here, right there. You just take all that out and honestly, this thing just pops out. You are gonna be breaking the warranty if you have any kind of warranty on this cluster, which I highly doubt, but I uh, just wanna put it out. Now that we have some electrical tape, let's fix our airbag light. <laughs> and one little piece of electrical tape and we're in business. And moment of truth, guys did we get the results that we wanted oh buddy i do not see that airbag light and the miles are super clear i'm one happy man i mean do we have a check engine light now oh man more lights on the dash why why is that a new kind of I mean, what the heck we need access to that obd port so the next job let's go ahead and pop this down and see where our obd port is i have to go down to pick a pool and get another obd port we'll have to see what we have to do right now Oh wait, it just disappeared. It said check coolant level and then disappeared. So maybe it's the coolant sensor. Uh, but I mean, hmm, we'll have to check coolant for sure. Now that we got the two screws out, this thing should theoretically uh, just come down. I've never actually pulled this down before. So <laughs> if I break something, oh man, I'm gonna cry. Definitely looks like I'm doing the right thing, but uh, I'm gonna need both my hands. So thankfully guys, it was just sitting somewhere up here. Now we can honestly just direct it down there. Now we can use the OBD port. Uh, I think one of the tabs are broken. As you guys can see, it's supposed to mount up there, those two screws, and uh, one of them are broken on here. I think actually, no, both of them are broken. Um, so we'll definitely need a new OBD port and we'll rewire it later. But meantime, we can just stick it through the hole and use it. Let's just quickly read the code. Surprisingly guys, we only have eight issues and all eight of them are with the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and just clear the lights because uh, honestly, there's a bunch of different things from misfiring to gas caps being loose to just a bunch of things I honestly don't even know if this still relates to this car as of right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this and uh, whatever comes back, we'll go ahead and diagnose. First start up with actually clearing the lights guys. Buddy, that's not gonna last long. But yeah, guys, hopefully in about a day or two after driving, I should get the real codes. But right now, guys, this cluster is looking so good. This is how I always wanted it to be. Zero lights on the dash. The mileage is actually showing. Look how beautiful this looks. Oh my God, I love E36s. Look at this setup as well. It looks so good. The only thing that doesn't look good as of right here is this. We got a little bit of crinkles on the vent right here and this thing is kind of wonk. So definitely need a new grill right here. But other than that, this is beautiful, that's beautiful. Everything is honestly working shockingly. So I'm just a very happy man right now. All righty, and the thing I really didn't want to deal with, but we're gonna have to deal with, is that actually a dent? I hope that's not an actual dent. I hope that's how it's supposed to be, but uh, anyhow, uh, we need to get these three studs out of here. So, uh, so I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just spray some WD-40 on these and hammer these out. Um, obviously you can also unscrew these out, but I feel like that's just gonna be so, so, so long. Literally somebody on YouTube said it took them 12 hours. I really hope it doesn't take us that long, but let's just do it. Who else is like me? I'd rather have oil on my hands than WD-40. Like I never put gloves on, but WD-40, I'm putting some gloves on.
And thankfully guys, only about 30 minutes later, we got the three crack studs out. Thankfully, this is one of those kind of headers that it's not actually like threaded in. It's just like you pop it out. So after a little bit of hammering on the grass to make sure I didn't actually damage this, and I put it on top of the toolbox as well. You don't want to scrape this side, obviously, and you don't want to scrape the top end either. And it looks like, honestly, I did a great job and I'm really proud of myself. I don't know what happened to our header, guys. Our header, this piece right here, to this piece is completely disconnected. Like this is on my exhaust and I just have a giant circle if you guys saw from early in the video. So that's just insane. So thankfully this one's ready to go. We just need to put a nut and a bolt and then tighten that up and we'll be good to go. And the other one, thankfully you guys saw, the other one's good to go 100% already. Anywho guys, that's gonna have to conclude the video. Thankfully we got those bolts out of there. I'm super happy with that. So hopefully uh, once we actually get this car down to probably Blake's house or something, we'll start working on the headers as well. Um, again, huge shout out to Blake for helping me out with all this stuff. Cause this stuff for me is like one level and he's on a whole nother level so shout out to blake we're doing a lot of collaboration work at the same time so i appreciate him but anyways we also did get that beautiful radio in that radio is from race german guys if you guys want to get that beautiful retro style um you know radio kind of like a 2021 radio but at the same time have that retro look that kind of looks like back in the 90s i think this radio absolutely killed it bluetooth capabilities which is the main thing we definitely need to upgrade the speakers now actually after hearing this beautiful radio i need speakers anyways if you guys are enjoying the e36 m3 build make sure to smash the like button let me know also what kind of wrap should we wrap the e36 m3 at first i was like i'm gonna try to keep this as original as possible but then honestly as i'm starting to gut more and more things in the interior uh part of the headliners coming down and stuff like that i was like you know what honestly i'm just gonna fully send it on a track car i want to honestly put like hashtag save a bmw across the entire car or something crazy i don't know i've never actually done anything crazy like that because it costs a lot of money but i do want to send it i do want to send it so let me know any crazy ideas you guys have for the e36 m3 what kind of wrap color should we also go with i want something kind of like subtle nothing too crazy something nice clean you know, should we go with like a blue, but like an E36 blue or something? Or should we go with like a Nardo gray? Or should we go with something kind of on the darker side, but nothing like, like that. Like that, that was a little too bright. My brother actually loves this car and it looks beautiful. But for me, for the E36, I don't want it that bright. So let me know down below what other colors you guys think. Maybe even, some, maybe even a dark purple, I think would look kind of clean. Let me know down below. But without further ado, guys, I'll keep y'all posted with what's going on with the shop. The 335 IS has been at the body shop for two weeks. I'm getting no response. So I'll have to keep you guys posted on that. And the E36, hopefully going to be building more and more on it. And the manual swap should be coming soon, guys. So stay tuned. Without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in cert, cause I wanna have worth.